Hey everybody, it's Ron from Ron's Computer Videos. How's it going this evening? I uh, I wanted to reach out to you uh, because, you know, we haven't talked in a little bit, so I figured it'd be nice to just see how you're doing, um, how the cats are, you know, all that stuff. But while I got your attention, maybe we can talk about a new thing that just, uh, just kind of came out on the market from uh, JD Micro with a partnership with Mac Effects, which it honestly, it fills kind of a cool need in the Apple II community. And it doesn't matter. It's not like some kind of crazy high-end device or something, but it does uh, satisfy a need that a lot of people, especially uh, power users have. And that is for um, easy to use mass storage. So this little doodad is called the X drive. And again, this is a partnership between JD Micro and MacFX. And what this does is it basically replicates the functionality of another device that people might be familiar with. If you know, you know. Um, but what it does is it uh, builds on it and makes some pretty nice improvements. So I thought um, I would get one of these in, uh, which actually this one was donated to the channel. Uh, thanks, Mark. Um, and uh, I thought I would maybe take a few minutes and maybe do the thing that everybody is most interested in, and that's benchmarking. Um, but yeah, let's go ahead and do it. Like I was saying, the X drive is a mass storage solution for the Apple II, the 2 Plus, the 2E, the 2GS, um, pretty much everything except for the compact portables. Um, but yeah, it's, it's kind of neat. Um, it, uh, as it says right now, this device uh, definitely fills uh, kind of a, a, a need for mass storage devices on those machines, but something that's easy, because there's some other things that have been on the market for a while that um, are, you know, highly prized by collectors, but they're just, you can't get them. You just can't get them anymore. So somebody that's just trying to get into like, hey, I want to uh, set up a BBS or something like that on my Apple IIe or somebody that's got an Apple IIgs and they really want to take full advantage of the GSOS experience or they want to play around with um, any of the um, kind of game collections, app collections, things like that. Like there's something that's cool uh, that, you know, like you know, Total Replay, and then the sequel, Total Instant Replay, Total Replay 2, um, those type of things, you've got to have, like, a device where you can use SmartPort. And, yeah, I mean, you can do it with floppy emulation, that's okay, but this is much, much faster, and maybe a little bit easier, because you can you can pull media and swap your stuff around, uh, and, and do it with a, like, a GUI menu and stuff for, like, adding your images and all that type of stuff, but... Uh, this device, it's important to point out that you basically have to use it with like disk images or Prodos order disk images. Um, they need to uh, basically, you know, whatever it is you're doing, it has to support like either like block mode or it needs to support smart, uh, smart drive mode. And that's like most things. So, uh, you know, you're not going to be able to like boot a like go out and download a floppy disk or something like that. That's not really this thing's jam. Uh, there are other solutions that kind of fill that need, but um, I don't know. This is kind of a fun thing if you're familiar and you really like how the booty uh, worked or how a microdrive turbo or something like that worked. Um, this will definitely be a cool thing for you. It actually has a nice little PDF file uh, manual that's included with it that you can download and read online. So before you make a purchase, before you do anything, make an investment, definitely go out and read the manual and check it out. Um, it's got a lot of good information. It'll tell you about um, kind of what the what the uh, the possibilities are, but then also maybe what some of the limitations are. Um, the thing that's really nice about this is it not only supports uh, connecting a USB drive, sort of like the booty did, rather. Uh, but it also supports SD cards. So you can go and get a nice fast SD card and pop it in there. And maybe it's a little bit easier for you depending on what your workflow looks like. Um, so if you're somebody that uses like Blue SCSI or uses some of those other optical or not, or you know, hard disk slash optical drive emulators uh, for like Macs and PCs and next boxes and Apple II machines and all that. Um, yeah, it might work better with kind of the media and stuff you already have on hand. Uh, but it is nice. The manual does go in pretty deep. 
especially for people that are new to the hobby to kind of understand like how to set things up for brute priority um like you know orientation <laughs> don't get it backwards uh, all those type of things but it is it's it's pretty cool because it also uh, takes you through and shows you what the um the environment looks like which if you're familiar with some of again it's primary inspiration um you will instantly recognize uh kind of how the interface works where you can uh, basically add up to uh, eight different um, smart smart port or block image devices, and uh, those will show up on the machine kind of as slots. Uh, it's it's pretty easy to go in. Um, it's also nice you can set boot or you can set like write protect on those. So if you just want, if you're experimenting, you wanted to try something without having like a volatile disc out there, you can turn those things off. Um, with just a hit of a button, you can switch between uh, USB storage and SD card storage. They're not accessible at the same time, but um, if you have something where it's like, oh, well, I've got this type of work on this and I've got this type of work on another, I got games over here and I got apps over here and I will have two different kind of experiences one button you can switch back and forth between the two so this is basically my apple 2 gs um it is a i i've i got some different stuff but this is a rom one very vanilla uh it does have a modern ram card in it um i also tested this against a couple of other devices um i tested it against the um if you think about kind of its primary uh, inspiration. I also tested it against uh, the Blue SCSI using the uh, Apple High Speed SCSI card, and um, I was pretty impressed with the results. Let's take a look. Um, the way that these images kind of pop up, uh, you know, it might be a little tough to read, but don't worry. At the end, I've got a chart that just kind of lays it out. It compares uh, both uh, using an SD card, using a uh, USB stick, um, and then a couple of other things. And then comparing that against something like, you know, a blue SCSI with the, the high speed Apple SCSI card. But this first step right here, this is SD cards writing. Um, you can see the speeds. They're not anything to write home about, but that is just kind of how that is. Um, I'm not 100% sure of anything that is killer speed on the writes uh, that isn't like a DMA based card. So uh, this right here is basically the, let me change the slide here. Um, this gets you all the way through. Um, it was kind of pokey on those big transfers as you kind of saw the numbers, it goes down uh, kind of as things go. But keep in mind, 99.9% .9 of what you're doing on here is gonna be reading data. Um, so that's where the real uh, things to pay attention to are. Um, here's some read speeds. This is not too bad. This is exactly what you would see if you compare it to um, other uh, USB-based uh, storage devices. Um, this was pretty good. Uh, when compared to the booty, it, um, it's basically uh, byte for byte the same. Um, they also, in the uh, test, uh, which is it's benchmarked uh, by Brutal Deluxe Software, um, there are also like a 64K buffer uh, read mode and a uh, block by block read mode and I mostly got that stuff captured as well so um, on the uh, 64k buffer test it's uh, 33 kilobytes per second and on the block by block test for SD cards it is 28 kilobytes per second so going over to writing um, with uh, USB the USB write it's it's slower than uh, writing to an SD card, uh, which I kind of suspected it would be. Um, but, uh, you know, it's, um, it kind of, it kind of gets bogged down there at the end, uh, writing to USB. And that's using the, um, the original SD card that actually comes with it for free. This is a 128 meg uh, SD card. Uh, the read speeds though, pretty great. Um, I was very impressed by how fast it was. It's it's more or less on par with the read speeds from SD. Um, SD, again, a little bit faster on the writes, but um, the reads are pretty much the same. Uh, same thing with the, um, the 64K uh, buffer test and the uh, block by block mode. Um, and then I went ahead and of course, I compared it to 
A. Here, I'll swap out the <laughs> swap out cam two. Um, I went ahead and I uh, used a blue SCSI two with the, I guess it's the sandwich two, I think is what it's called, the high speed SCSI card. Um, and yeah, I got s read speeds that were kind of along the same lines. Um, nothing, or the right speeds rather, nothing really to write home about, but that's kind of the whole thing with, um, you know, um, flash media on that. But uh, the read speeds, yeah, it's pretty fast. I mean, that's that's what DMA will get you. Um, you might get similar speeds on something like the MicroDrive Turbo or whatever, but yeah, it really performs well in that 64K buffer test and on the block by block. So, but uh, basically, this is a breakdown of uh, kind of what the speeds look like. Um, the, uh, as you can see, the um, the SD and the USB, they're, they're very, very much neck and neck for um, read speeds. Um, but if you do have stuff that you do that is more write intensive, I would really recommend using an SD card. That just seems to be kind of the thing. And I would use as fast of an SD card as you can maybe source. Um, it does seem to, like if I had some generic 32 meg uh, cards that were from like Micro Center, and then I used like that really nice SanDisk card. The SanDisk card gave much better numbers. So I just went with that for the results. But uh, yeah, it's, it's kind of hard to beat a, um, a drive that has DMA. But good luck pricing out a um, sandwich to or like the high speeds card um, for the, the price where you could be all in on something like the, um, the X drive. And I thought about it um, when I was testing it out and I was like, well, what if it's just something with uh, this USB stick or something like that? And you know what? I actually, um, I've got some very fancy uh, USB sticks. Like this one here is made by Mushkin. This is um, a Ventura Plus. Like this is supposed to be like, you know, a really, a really nice and fast uh, USB 3, uh, 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 you know, stick, but it didn't really perform any different. Um, and I thought, well, maybe it's just something with the way that the controller on there or something. So I went to Best Buy and I picked up just kind of a generic. I think this is also, this is a PNY, a 64 meg. Um, th this one is specifically USB 3. This one is like USB 3.1. I'm not sure what the point one means. Is it a subwoofer? Ah, who could say if you're in a home theater, but anyway, uh, no, they, they didn't, they didn't perform any better. So I would say you are perfectly fine to stick with the stock, uh, SD card, or I'm sorry, USB stick that comes with this. And, uh, you'll probably have uh, a really good experience. So, but anyway, um, yeah, I had a lot of fun testing this out and I had a lot of fun playing with it. Um, I do like it better than, um, than this other card just because it's, um, the, the menus, it supports long file names. Um, it's laid out a little bit nicer. Um, it, uh, and, and you can get them and they're new and they're going to be supported for a while. So, uh, yeah, so I would, uh, I would check it out. Um, I know this was kind of just a quick and dirty video. It took forever to do all those benchmarks. I hope you appreciate <laughs> all the time and trouble that went into this, but, um, in any case, that's really it for the moment. So I want to thank everybody for taking a little bit of time out of your evening, spending it here with me. And as I always say, Apple II forever.